Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. You get glitter stitches and I get glitter stitches and our projects get glitter stitches. I'm the Knitting Fairy Godmother. And today is a virtual book club. So go get your project so that you can knit along. And while you're getting your project, I'd like to invite you to sign up for our knit letter. It's a newsletter, but all we talk about is knitting and you get some glitter stitches in your inbox every week. And you can sign up at my website, www.knittingfairygodmother.com or there's a link in the bio. I'd love to send you knitting things because that's my jam. Okay, so today we have virtual book club and we're talking about this book, Mindful Thoughts for Makers, Connecting Head, Heart and Hands by Ellie Beck. And today we're talking about experimenting. Um, on page 35, Ellie talks about letting go and learning to let go, right? It's a process. So in the subtext of this, for me, what comes up is learning to let go of perfection. And so for me, my making has become an inroad to everything that Brene Brown talks about around imperfection every it's kind of a buzzword right now um, this is my imperfect practice and i'm trying to be vulnerable right and for me i have had to take little tiny baby steps towards this idea and um, i noticed that i was attaching to perfection and that was preventing me from finishing my knitting project projects or that was one of the reasons I felt a lot of um, like shame that it wasn't perfect and I felt like I was an experienced knitter enough that I should be knitting perfectly and it's all this like made up thought bubble that's happening inside of my brain but also like not true so <laughs> I had to start really, really small and tiny. And the way that I decided to do that, the process of learning to let go for me was that I have one project that I knit every single day from start to finish. And if I make a mistake, it has to stay. And that's the rule. That's the framework that I have had to create for myself to practice making mistakes and letting go of this unattainable idea that we refer to as perfection. So my knitting practice, which is something that I do every day, has become an inroad to my experimentation and everyday experience with all of these really big weighty ideas that sort of get thrown around around perfection. So my personal experience has been around learning to let go and it has been a process. You know, the first couple of times that I made this project and I made mistakes, it was hard. I actually undid my mistakes at that point and I had to work with those ideas and really develop the resilience that it would be okay if I did make a mistake and this is knitting so what is a mistake anyways it's kind of this made-up construct so it was a good way to practice and I have I had to and I have to and I will continue to practice to make mistakes as a way to get comfortable with not being right and not being perfect right? That's just where I am on my personal journey, learning to let go. So the heading, the chapter that we're talking about is experimenting. And Ellie Beck, the author, talks about a good way to begin experimenting is to use your materials or tools in a new, different, or quotation marks, wrong way. So she suggests trying to kind of throw out the rule book. If you normally knit on US 7 or 4.5 millimeter needles and worsted weight medium yarn, 
to switch that up. So either changing the size of the yarn to something very small, small yarn, big needles, or big needles and um, smaller yarn, or you know, smaller needles and big yarn, that could be, you could go that direction too, but changing the ratio between the, the diameter of the yarn and the diameter of your needles and seeing what the result is. So here, when we're doing that, we're also trying to cultivate an experiment and we're trying to create a hypothesis, do the experiment and see what the result is. And sometimes there's like some secret nuggets that bubble up in the doing process, but also there's um, thought experiments and ideas that happen from the hypothesis to the doing to the result. And so again, this is just trying to bring play back into the art or the making time because sometimes I feel the pressure of this is the designer's vision and I have to execute it perfectly and I'm putting that pressure on myself and the idea of experimenting is that that's not necessary that there is no pressure that I can the way that I knit a pattern is sort of this this internal expression of how I am naturally. And so if there are mistakes that go along with that, maybe there's experiments too. These are ways that I can try new ideas, think about things in a different way, and even create something unexpected, right? So the author goes on to say that um, the this, approach to experimenting is a lesson for life and it's some it's one of the ways that we can embody our we can bring our making habits into our living habits and so we practice these ideas in a small way when we're making and then it like ripples out into our regular how we live every day every moment so um this is a quote. She says, it takes a certain courage to experiment and step out into the wildness of creativity. Oh, so juicy. To give yourself space to put the wrong mark, to use the wrong yarn, clay, waste paper, or piece of wood for carving. And it's scary to be adventurous in this manner. But many of us creatives know that it is by pushing through the fear that we better come to know ourselves in our arts pra practice. And she talks about how scientists conduct experiments. They start with an idea, they test the idea, and they see what the result is. And scientists have the expectation that some things are gonna fail, but in the process of the testing and the result, there are learnings that happen whether it proves the hypothesis true or false and so again in this way having the intention that i'm going to try and see what happens goes back to the nitifesto that we can try and see there is an element of having an idea and seeing what happens when we try it and then the experiment is the freedom, right? Maybe you're having like this, I, th <laughs> I think back through time and like knitting is an ancient craft. The first remnants of knitting were found in the pyramids of Egypt. And to me, that is so far back in time. And I think how can something new be created for, from something ancient? And it keeps happening. Every new designer that has this new way of putting stitches together or this new thought process, or what if we do it this way? There's more efficient ways to do things. There are new frontiers to be explored, but none of that is accessible without the curiosity of experimenting. 
So if you have ever experimented with your knitting, I would love to hear what happened and how that happened for you. And comment below. I'll check in and let you know what happens with my experiments. So until next week, keep knitting.